What's up, dude? Everybody knows that 2023 was the year of the chicken. I mean, that's not official, and not at all, it's not even official a little bit, but it's what we're calling it. And since we did so many tasty chicken recipes last year, I wanted to compile three of my absolute favorites into one video. So here we go, best chicken recipes of 2023. I hope you enjoy. Now let's go. The first recipe on our list was shoyu chicken. This was a dish that we enjoyed so freaking much. It's an inexpensive one pot dish that is incredibly easy to make and just pays dividends in flavor. Here's how you make it. Start with a medium sized pot and all you need to do is add one cup of soy sauce. And when it comes to soy sauce, I personally love this Wanja Shan brand. I'll put a link for that down in the description. Although I could recommend you use a Hawaiian brand like Aloha soy sauce. I know a lot of people love that one. One thing I learned from my friend Vivian about choosing soy sauce is to swirl the bottle and just see how it sticks to the edges. If you see it's thick and has a little bit of viscosity to it and sticks like that, it means it's pretty good. On another note, I don't want anything to stop you from making this dish whatever soy sauce you have in your cabinet, whether it be light soy sauce or just another brand, just use it. Next, add one and a half cups of water. It's as simple as that. Although if you're using light soy sauce, I might just recommend that you add only one cup of water. Now a quarter cup of brown sugar going in. That's dark brown sugar. If you don't have dark brown sugar, you could use light brown sugar. If you don't have that, use white sugar. If you don't have white sugar, you could try honey, you could try agave, you could try maple syrup, you could try monk fruit sweetener. The point is you just need a sweetener, all right? Just look at what you have in your cabinet and use that. The last ingredient I'm adding for the liquids is a little bit of rice vinegar, just one tablespoon. And again, I know a lot of you probably don't have rice vinegar sitting in your cabinet right now. You could just use white wine vinegar. You could use white vinegar. You could use a little bit of lemon juice or you could just leave it out entirely. Everybody is gonna cook this thing, all right? Everybody's cooking this dish. The next items we're gonna be adding are called aromatics. Aromatics are simply just vegetables or herbs that add a strong flavor and aroma to your dish. For today, I've got ginger, garlic, garlic and green onions. For the ginger, I'm starting with a piece that's a little bit bigger than my thumb, but a thumb-sized piece of ginger will be fine. I know what you're thinking, Sonny. Wow, that's a big thumb. That's like a thumb Shrek would have. Why is it not, why is that not, why isn't it green? An amazing trick I've learned for peeling ginger is not to use a knife or a peeler, but something blunt, like a spoon is what I use. Works perfectly to peel that skin. You could use a butter knife or something else, but as you can see how this is just shredding away like effortlessly, really works extremely well. If you use a peeler or a knife, you tend to waste too much of the ginger. Spoon gets it off so nicely. Now we just need to slice this ginger into slivers. And to make this safer, I like to first take off a few little slivers from one edge so I can then flip it on its side. Now it's sitting really stable. And from here, I'll make the rest of my slices just like so. And again, when I get to the very end, flip again. And from here, we'll just slice through. With the garlic, I take my knife and I just give a little tap which makes it really easy to remove that whole clove. From there I'll just take off that little woody bit at the end and it's completely done, peeled and ready to go. For the spring onions I like to lay them out. Tip of the knife down. I got my knuckle here on the back and just pull through to take those tops off. Turn it around. Same thing over here. Tops and bottoms. From there I'll just slice these directly in half like so. Simply just add all of your aromatics into your soy broth. That's five cloves of garlic and five to seven spring onions. Depends on their size. I did seven. The name of the dish is show you chicken. Show you chicken. So let's talk about the cut we're gonna use. I'm using bone in skin on thighs. Some divine culinary magic takes place when you cook meat on the bone. I'm a big believer in it. However, if you wanna use boneless, skinless thighs, you could absolutely do that too. You could use whole legs, you could use drumsticks. You could even do wings like this. I would avoid using breasts because they tend to dry out a little bit, but the rest of the chicken is good to go. And all I need to do with my thighs here is just remove some of this excess fat. Just doesn't look good to me. I'm just gonna trim it up a little bit. Again, you could skip this if you want, but it does make it look nicer for presentation. Something just like that looks perfect to me. There are a ton of variations you can make when it comes to shoyu chicken. A lot of people like to spice it up a bit with some chili flakes or even some fresh chili. So feel free to do that if you want. Although I'm just going for the base recipe today as this is a dish for new cooks. I like to start my chicken in here skin side down. I know a lot of you were thinking it didn't look like a lot of liquid, but as you put the chicken in, it's going to volumize everything, right? You can see now how much space has been created. I might just pull some of those aromatics so they're floating on top of the chicken a little bit like this. And also as that chicken cooks, it's going to release juices and fat into this liquid too. It's a beautiful thing. Please feel no pressure to do this next part, but if you have the foresight, making this the day before and then leaving it to marinate for 24 hours covered in the fridge before cooking it can only do it a lot of good, but it is not necessary, so do not worry about it. Now let's set our chicken on the stove and I'm gonna turn the heat on to just about medium. We wanna bring this to a light, gentle simmer. Whenever you're cooking meat in liquid like this, you never want a rolling boil. You want a gentle simmer, which in the end is just gonna give you a much more tender result. If you look around the edges of the pot right now, 
Now this is what a gentle simmer looks like. So from here, I'm gonna turn down the heat just a touch over low to maintain that. And then I like to put a cracked lid on. So not fully covered like this, but just off to the side slightly like that so it can breathe a little bit, but while also trapping some of the heat and steam. At this point, I'll start a timer for 30 minutes exactly. And while that's cooking, you can go and just play like a nice chill game of ping pong with your cameraman, Marcus. After 15 minutes, what I like to do is take the lid off and just flip the chicken now so it's skin side up. And as you can see now, it's just stained with the soy sauce, which is a beautiful look. From here, we'll pop the lid back on, cracked again, and we'll cook for another 15 minutes for a total of 30 minutes. Here we are after 30 minutes. And what I like to do now, you don't have to do this, but I do temp the chicken. It's hitting right around 180, which is I think perfect for chicken thighs. Unlike breasts that are better pulled at a lower temperature, when you take chicken thighs a little bit further, they just get really tender. Now when it's done, kill the heat and just let it sit in the stock that it cooked in for at least 30 minutes. A big mistake I personally see people making when they cook meat in liquid like this or braise it is they pull it out as soon as it's done. And if you do that, it tends to dry out a lot. Letting it sit in that stock and rest is a pro tip that makes it literally five times better. Don't forget it. My friends, for the last year, I have been working hard on a digital book. Master in the Making is an ebook that contains 55 carefully selected winning recipes. I'm truly proud of how this book turned out. So if you're ready to take the fast track to culinary success, just click the link down in the description to learn more. Now let's get back to the video. Now you can't make sure you chicken without making rice to go with it. And I know what you're thinking, Sonny, that rice cooker looks pretty advanced. And it is. However, the theme today is no man left behind, so we won't be using this. All you're gonna need is one of these. Long before I ever had a rice cooker, I was using this technique. It has never failed me. Start by adding two cups of rice to whatever kind of pot you have. Honestly, one that's a little bit smaller than this would be ideal, but this will work just fine. And what you wanna do is rinse this rice with cold water about three times to remove that excess starch. I like to first just put a tiny bit of water with the rice and then very gently with my fingertips I mix that releases the starch on the edge of the rice. And then I fill with more water, discard, and then repeat. Now all I have in here is the washed rice and the ratio I like to use is one cup of rice to one and a half cups of water. So here I have two cups of rice. I would do three cups of water, although I like to go just a little bit less than that. I think the less water you can get away with the better. But I'm going to teach you another pro trick right here in a second. So let's just put in the water. On another note, make sure there's no pieces of rice stuck to the edge of this pot. You don't want that either. Give it a little bit of a shake to even that water out. And what I'm looking for here is that the water is a nail's length above the rice. And I know that may seem weird to a lot of you, like how does that work? But it actually does. A lot of people say measure water just to the first knuckle, but I like going less, which is just about the nail. Now pop a lid on it, turn the heat first onto high. As soon as it comes to a boil, and you can tell because you see all the steam coming out from around this edge right here, it took about four minutes only. I'm gonna reduce the heat now all the way down to low, all the way to low. And you're gonna start a 10 minute timer. Don't touch it, don't open it, don't peek at it, don't think about it, okay? Leave it alone, low heat. When your time has elapsed, put your phone down, turn the heat off, and do not touch that lid. And now start another 10 minute timer. The heat is off and what's happening now is the rice is steaming and finishing cooking inside this pot. There's still a lot of heat in there. And once that timer goes off, your rice should be absolutely done. Let's take a look at it. <laughs> Looks really nice to me. The true test is whether or not it's stuck to the bottom, right? Let's have a look. Seems to be coming out very easily. This is great. I haven't done this technique in a while because I have the rice cooker, but it looks great. Works every time. I'll give that little mix. I'll cover it up again until I'm ready to use it and it's gonna be perfect and ready to go. Once your 30 minutes is up, I'm gonna pull out my thighs straight onto a little plate here on the side. And we just have two more things to do before we're ready to eat. First thing I'm gonna do is get out all these aromatics, just squeezing them through here a little bit. Make sure I get any of that delicious juice out. And the garlic. Ooh yeah. Marcus, come try this. Try that garlic, dude. Mm -hmm. That's fire. You like it? He likes it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
The first thing we need to do is thicken up that sauce because it's too loose right now. It's watery, right? To do that, I'm gonna take one tablespoon of cornstarch and two tablespoons of water. And I like to just mix it in with my finger like so. And that creates a slurry, which is gonna thicken our sauce and make it nice and shiny as well. Let me show you how to do it. I'm gonna turn my sauce on the medium high and we need to first bring this to a boil. Once that boil is achieved, make sure you remix your little slurry here a little bit because that cornstarch will fall to the bottom. We're gonna start adding it little by little. I may not need all of this. It really depends how thick you like your sauce. What you need to know about using these slurries is that once you add it, it's gonna stop the boil pretty much. You need to bring that mixture back to a bowl to see how thick it got. So still need more here, a little more. Turn the heat down now a little bit. Let's see how thick this is. Sometimes it's good to just put it on a spoon, give it a little pour or flip the spoon over, brush your finger through and just see how thick it is. I think we can even go a little bit thicker to add a little more. And again, it's just preference. If you like it thicker, you might wanna do like two tablespoons. I don't like my sauces too thick. Let's see how that looks with another teaspoon. Wow, it looks really good. Look at how beautiful that sauce is. Okay, that looks perfectly thick to me. That was a tablespoon plus one teaspoon. I'm gonna shut the heat off now. At this point, you can just drop the chicken straight back into the sauce. However, I'm gonna show you one last trick. That's really easy. I'm gonna throw my chicken skin side up into a pan and I'm gonna place it eight inches away from a high heat broiler. And after just about three, four minutes of broiling, you'll just have achieved this nice little texture on the skin. Just a slight little bit of crunch and color that gives it a little bit more flavor and texture. It's a nice little trick. From here, I'll drop my chicken back into that now thick sauce and just let it chill out while we plate the food. Right. Marcus, let's try this thing. Hell yeah. You do the honors. I mean, you did all the you did all the work, so. I deserve it. He deserves it. Me. Yeah, sure. You gotta give it up to recipes that are that easy, that cheap, and that delicious. I mean, I, 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 there's a real beauty to it. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. Recipe number two is this chicken shawarma that went incredibly viral across social media. A lot of people made this and everybody had great success with it. It is packed with flavor. This is definitely one recipe you wanna add to your arsenal. Here's how you pull it off. The first thing I'm gonna do today is lay out a couple layers of plastic wrap because we're gonna pound the chicken. And for this, I'm using boneless, skinless chicken thighs. You could use another cut if you want. Although these are always nice for grilling, I think. We'll lay it out on the plastic. Not even gonna trim them. Nobody's got time for that. And a few more layers of plastic wrap. You could definitely Definitely do this in a gallon Ziploc bag if you want. You don't need plastic wrap. Meat mallet and a little healthy aggression release. Very nice. If you don't have one of these things, just take out a pot. Bam, hit it with a little pot. There's always a way to hammer your meat. While shopping today, I ran into a watcher of the show, Paul. Paul, you're a super cool guy if you're watching, man. For Paul! This is for Paul! I like to just flip it back and forth. I don't need them super thin. Just remember when cooking any kind of protein, if it's all the same thickness, it's gonna cook evenly. That's why I like to flatten things out. Drop all our chicken thighs into this bowl. Here we go, shawarma time. Starting with some yogurt, olive oil, lemon juice, a little smoked paprika. This is chili powder. I'm using Kashmiri chili powder. It has basically no heat to it at all, but you could use a different one if you like. Salt, pepper, onion powder, a little bit of cardamom, white vinegar, ground cumin, and a little bit of ground fenugreek. And personally, I like to toast them whole and grind them myself, but you don't have to do that. But if you want to, pink he's out, it's pretty cool. And finally, ground coriander. Pop on my creepy Guga glove here. No, ew. And let's get in here and mix it. By the way, I've trialed this recipe a few times. Oh, and let me tell you, it is so good. It's some of the best chicken, I'm telling you. I always know when I'm appetized by like raw chicken that it's gonna be good. Marcus, come over here for a second, bro. Smell that. <laughs> Can't believe I almost forgot this, but garlic as well, right? I like to just use my microplane here and just shred it into this fine little paste, as you can see on the bottom. Bang, bang, bang. On another note, if you don't have a microplane yet, come on, it's a cheap tool, and I use it for three things, basically. Garlic, ginger, and hard cheeses, like especially Parmigiano and Reggiano. It's a tool I can't live without. I'll drop a link to this one in the description. Go ahead and mix the garlic in, and now we're marinating. 
Nice and sloppy. At this point, I would marinate for at least two hours. Although if you want to do it overnight or a full 24 hours or even two days, that's even better. It's up to you. It's until you lose patience, really. Before proceeding, let me be clear about something. This is a chicken shawarma gyro hybrid. I'm using the marinade of a chicken shawarma and the toppings and bread of a gyro minus the french fries. And while that chicken marinates, we're gonna make this raita sauce to serve with it once finished. I'm gonna start by grating up my cucumber here, just using the biggest setting on a box grater. And then what I like to do is spread it out a little bit and just hit it with the salt right now. Give it a little mix again. And that salt is really gonna help to draw out the moisture that's in this cucumber. So we don't wanna end up with a really wet sauce. Now I'm throwing it into a little strainer here. Just gotta have one of these, link in description, dough scraper. And then we're just gonna take it over the sink here and just start squeezing it out. That salt is really going to work right away. Thing is, if you don't do this, you're gonna end up with a really wet sauce and we don't want that. Yogurt, I'm using Greek yogurt, the cucumber, chopped cilantro, coriander, cumin, and lemon juice. As always, the recipe will be in the description. Give this all a really good mix. And it's really as simple as that, my friends. You got a great sauce here to have with your shawarma and it gives that nice, fresh, cooling element to the dish. I'm a little tired today, guys. I forgot the garlic again. This is so dumb. Same deal, two little cloves. I don't think garlic is actually traditional in this sauce. In it goes, and now your sauce is done. The next item we're gonna prep is some red onion, and I'm gonna show you a super easy way to take all that harsh onion taste out of your onions. I never work with straight raw onions like this anymore, I'll explain. First, we'll take a little V-cut, root out, peel, peel, peel. From here, we'll set it down, and I'm just gonna julienne it. Not too thin, not too thick. When you get about halfway, flip through, slice the rest. Here's what you need to do, my friends. Ice water, throw the onions in there. There's no salt or vinegar or anything in here. I've tried it with salt and vinegar and it tends to break the onions down. What this does is two things. Removes that really, really harsh onion spicy flavor. And at the same time, it makes them super duper crunchy, like crunchier than they would be just sliced raw. Super easy trick. And I really feel like once you try this, you won't go back. My preferred method for cooking the chicken is definitely gonna be outside on the grill over some lump charcoal. And to do that, I took what's probably my funnest kitchen tool ever. And it's this flame gun I use to fire up the coals. Once the coals are nice and hot and they've cooked down for about 10, 15 minutes, I'll throw on my chicken thighs and cook them for roughly four minutes per side. The main feature about my grill that I really love is that I can spin the top grate like this. So if my chicken's flaring up and getting too black too fast, I can simply spin it out of the way without having to fumble and try to flip everything with tongs. And that is not to be overlooked when you're grilling. That is super, super handy. As grilling season has now arrived, I'll put a couple links for both of these products down in the description. Once the chicken thighs are cooked, just take them off onto a resting rack and let them rest for about five minutes. On another note, shawarma is actually stacked pieces of meat cooking on a rotisserie grill with the heating element on the side. I mean, that's something you're gonna see when you get it out at a restaurant, but really this is a more at-home recipe. The last thing I'm gonna do is brush some pita bread with a little bit of olive oil and then toast it over the dying coals for about 20 seconds per side before making these wraps. For the toppings, I'm just doing some crunchy lettuce, some of our shawarma that I just chopped up into cubes, quartered sugar bomb cherry tomatoes, the red onions, which I just dried off, and of course our raita sauce. And if you wanna have some hot sauce on top of that, go for it. I'm really hungry. Let's get Marcus in here to taste this thing. He can watch me eat it. I'll cut it in half. I'll just take a bite. Putting it in my face. Mm -hmm. I like the char flavor from the grill. It's really nice on the bread and the meat. This is so good. Experiment with the toppings and the bread if you like. Just a great summer recipe, folks. The third and final recipe on our list was one that put a smile on faces all across the world, and it is butter chicken. I have made it so many times since posting that video, and it always just silences a room in a way that is so incredibly cool. It really is something special, my friends. Here's how you make it. I'm using chicken breast for this butter chicken. If you want to use thighs, you can go ahead. Those will be just as good. I just happen to like breasts better for this curry. I'll start by trimming a little bit of fat off this breast if necessary, and I'll remove these little tenders or 
right here as well. And then I wanna slice them into nice big cubes. I don't want a little skimpy piece of chicken in my curry, so something like this. So you get a good chunk of chicken every time you take a bite. And with the tender, same deal, just cut them into big cubes. I'll also remove that little tendon that's in the tender. Our chicken is gonna get two marinades. The first is lemon juice, this beautiful Kashmiri chili powder that I love so much, and some good old fashioned salt. I'll just give this all a good mix. We'll just let these ingredients work their magic for about 20 minutes first. For the second marinade, we're gonna be using some Greek yogurt, a little bit of neutral oil, that's just avocado oil, ground fenugreek, turmeric, as well as some ginger and garlic that I just ground into a fine paste with my handy dandy little thing. I don't know what it is, but it's awesome. And garam masala. All your spices for the second marinade now going in, getting colorful here. Yum, yum, yum. The oil and the yogurt. And just mix it all up again, making sure to distribute those spices. Oh, I can't tell you how good this already smells, my friends. When raw chicken makes you hungry, you know it's gonna be good. At this point, the ginger and the garlic is also going in. Give that a mix in. Let the garlic and ginger enter the chat. And now you hurry up and wait. We marinate for a couple hours at least. And if you have the foresight and the godlike patience, do it the day before, a full 24 hour marinade would be awesome. Overnight for 12 hours would be second best. But if you wanna just do it for an hour or two, it's still gonna be amazing, all right? Now, if you ask Ask me, you can't have a great butter chicken without some incredible fluffy garlic naan. If you wanna make rice with this, go ahead. I'll put a video up in the corner right now for that. However, dipping that garlic naan into the curry is a beautiful experience and I recommend it to everyone. Recipe will be in the description, but we're starting with lukewarm water, active dry yeast, little pinch of sugar so that yeast has a snack. Now we'll give that a little mix and let it sit for about 10 minutes. Now we add one egg, some oil. This is just avocado oil, but you could use another kind of oil and some yogurt. Mix that all together. Just add some salt to your all-purpose flour and give it a good mix. Then I'll just take a pile of my flour and make a little well here in the center like so. I'll pour my wet ingredients into that little well I just made. Made? This is scary stuff. If there's a breach, we're screwed. Ugh. And what I'm doing now is just pulling in flour from this little well into the mix. Ooh. I need to make my well a little bigger, all good. And we'll just keep working that in and you'll see your little well begin to thicken up. You can also do this in a bowl. I just like doing this, I think it's kind of fun. Oh, there's a breach. In the end, it always works out. If you have a KitchenAid or a stand mixer, you could also just use that. You can see now it's really starting to thicken up. I'm just tossing in a lot more of the flour now. I'll now switch to this little dough scraper, start pulling in a lot more of that flour. And eventually this will turn into a kneading process. At this point, I'm gonna start really pushing the dough together and just scraping as I go. And you wanna just knead this now and here we go our dough has really come together I'm just kneading it out a little bit so it's nice and smooth slightly sticky to the touch but not really sticking to your hands very much at all and there we go my friend just about five minutes of kneading and I'm just gonna create a little tension on the top by pulling from the top down to the bottom like so and we make a nice little ball like this and into a bowl it goes to prove cover it with a hot damp kitchen towel for 40 minutes to one hour depending on how hot your kitchen is we just leave this out at room temp to rise our non has been proving for about an hour now and I'm just gonna drop it out onto a lightly floured work surface so it doesn't stick. Now I'm just gonna roll it out into a rough little log. You can make these not as big or as small as you like. I'll do about 10 out of here, portion them out. If some are a little bigger or a little smaller, it's all good. In fact, I think I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's cool, they'll be big. Looks like a nice little pillow, doesn't it? And all we need to do now is roll it out to somewhere around a quarter of an inch thick. That looks good to me. Nice irregular shape as naan should be. And it's ready for the pan. Before we cook the naan, we need to make the garlic butter for it. So into a little pot over medium heat, I'm just adding unsalted butter. Butter. When the butter's melted, we're gonna add some slices of garlic and a nice big pinch of salt. Just about three minutes with the butter and you turn that off and just let it chill. We are gonna add some herbs to this in a minute, but not till we cook the naan. I've just brought a really lightly oiled pan up to high heat. Drop in your naan. After just 30 seconds, we're gonna flip. They cook really fast and you can see it's starting to bubble up now, which is cool. There we go, another 30 seconds and it's totally done. At this point, I'm adding my cilantro to the garlic butter last minute. If you don't like cilantro, if it tastes like soap to you, try parsley or another herb of your choice, that will be fine. And we just brush with our garlic butter and I'll cook all the naan and then just layer them up like this, one on top of the other. And happy days, my friends. When your chicken is done marinating, it's time to, well, cook it, right? You could do this in a pan, but I'm gonna do it under the broiler to get a little bit of that fiery taste. I'm putting it on a sheet pan lined with tin foil. I'll just spread this out nicely so we don't have any large clumps of chicken that steam and not brown. Something just a little like this is perfect. I cannot tell you how freaking good this chicken smells. I can't wait until it's cooked. My broiler is set to high heat. I'm gonna jam this chicken under there and we're gonna keep a careful eye on it. What we don't wanna do here is overcook the chicken. It needs to finish in the sauce. And away it goes. 
All right, there we go. Just about five minutes under the broiler. And what I wanted was these little charring bits, which I got right here. I wish there was a little bit more of that, but my broiler isn't that powerful, but this is fine. For the tomatoes, I chose these little sugar bomb tomatoes. Why did I do this? Because these are the best tomatoes I can find in November in America. If this was the summer season, I would be using a different kind of tomato. These are just really sweet. And so they're gonna make for a really, really great sauce. However, if you can't find these, just use another kind of tomato. It will work just fine. Oh. <laughs> And what we're gonna do is make a little tomato puree out of these tomatoes. So I'm just throwing them all into a blender, whack on the lid and blend it up. Simple as that, can be a little bit chunky. I just did that for about 10 seconds. Time to build this curry sauce. I'm turning a pan onto low to medium heat and we're throwing in a stick of cinnamon, a chili that I just cut a little slit into it so it will release its heat, a few cardamom pods and a couple little pieces of clove. Now I know what you're thinking. A lot of you don't have these spices. You can just skip this step and go to the next one if you don't have these. But we're trying to be pretty authentic with this butter chicken so we're starting with this. These have been toasting now for about four or five minutes. At this point we're adding our butter. That's just unsalted butter and we'll continue continue toasting these spices off in that butter. The spices have been in the butter for about two minutes now. I'm gonna remove them. Those spices are just meant to flavor the butter. Now I'm putting in more ginger and garlic, just ground up like the ones before for the chicken marinade. We'll toast this off for a minute. Once that garlic and ginger is nice and fragrant in with the tomato puree, this color is gonna change. I know it looks a little bit like a watermelon popsicle or something right now, but as this cooks, it will deepen in flavor and color. I'm turning up the heat now just to a little over medium and we'll let this cook down. Butter chicken gets really creamy, not just from the butter and the cream, but from the cashews. It should have cashews. At this point, I'm gonna season it up a little bit. Just adding about a teaspoon of salt at this point. We can add more later if we need to. A little bit more Kashmiri chili powder. Tiny little bit of sugar, just a teaspoon. Wow, and the color is starting to get really incredible. Partly due to the tomatoes cooking and partly due to that chili powder I just put in. Wowza, wowza. I'm also just dumping in the juice that came out of the chicken because that's just flavor and it might as well be in your curry. You may notice I didn't put onions in this butter chicken and that was on purpose. Authentic butter chicken doesn't have any onions in it. You'll see a lot of people putting onions in it and you certainly can if you want, but you don't need to. A curry like chicken tikka masala is meant to have onions in it, but butter chicken, no. Here it is after about 12, 15 minutes. And as you can see, the color is absolutely incredible. What we're doing is almost turning this into like a loose tomato puree. As it's cooking down, the flavors are really deepening. Here we are after 20 minutes of reducing this down. And as you can see, this tomato juice is turning into a paste, which is what we want. And these flavors are really starting to get enriched. Smells pretty darn good in this house right now, I'll tell you that much. Here we are, 25 minutes later, and you can listen to this sound. It's gone from an evaporation sound to a sizzling sound. So all the water is removed from the tomato, and what's left over is the tomato sizzling in the butter with the spices and the cashew. Now we're starting to get some real crazy flavor. Another three minutes of toasting, and we have like this tomato puree. You can see this now, right? At this point, we add water back in. We'll go ahead and bring this back to a simmer. Back into the blender we go, and we blend on high for one minute. You don't have to do this next step, but for an extra velvety smooth sauce, I'm gonna pass it through a chinois strainer. And I'm just pushing it through now with a spoon. Make sure we get that all out. Don't wanna waste a single drop, although that's impossible. Just be thorough. We are almost done, my friends. Little more garam masala. Fenugreek, these are toasted fenugreek seeds. If you can find the leaves, that would be best. Now, a little bit more butter coming in at the end. Just cold unsalted butter for that extra creamy touch. And of course, a little bit of cream. Fill it all out and finish it all off. The last thing we need to do is put in all of our chicken, which is gonna add a ton more flavor as well. Get in there, you. And I've got the heat just low right now. I wanna be gentle with this chicken just to warm it up in the sauce. It's totally cooked through, but not overcooked. The chicken has been in the sauce on low heat for two to three minutes. I'm just putting a touch more salt now to finish up the seasoning aspect. And happy days, my friends. There is your butter chicken. Let's just garnish it up and serve it with the naan. Let's serve this up in our traditional Indian bowl here. We'll finish with just a little bit of cold cream, as is per tradition. This is really more for the look than anything, if you ask me. Some more of those fenugreek seeds, but if you had the leaves, that would be better. And some cilantro, but if you don't like it, just leave it out. And there is your traditional butter chicken, my sweet, sweet, sweet friends. Coming in for a taste. Oh gosh, I'm hungry. This looks so good.
Remember, all the recipes for these chicken videos will be located in the description underneath this video. And I just really wanna send out a huge thank you to, well, to you, to the person who is watching this video, to the person who supports me every time I upload. It really means the world to me. And you are the reason I keep posting these videos. So please, anytime you have feedback for me about a recipe, send me a message, send me an email. I do love reading those things. And that's all. I really hope you had a great year. I will see you in 2024. Until next time, you know I love you and I'm out.